To find the number of permutations for a multisat with different types of elements, possibly with restrictions on the use of the elements, we find the exponential generating functions for these sets consisting of a single type of element with the same restrictions. Then the product is an exponential generating function for the permutations on the original multiset G. In principle, that's all we need to do. In practice, there's a lot of steps, so let's take a look at a more involved example. Let's find the number of permutations of two elements A and B, where A has to be used one or two times, and B has to be used an odd number of times. Since A has to be used one or two times, its generating function is... Since B has to be used an odd number of times, its generating function is... And we can get that if we take our Taylor series for e to the x, for e to the minus x, subtract them, and divide by 2. And so our exponential generating function for the multiset will be the product, which we can expand, To find the number of n permutations, we need to rewrite this as a single series. Since we're treating this as a formal power series, we can do termwise operations provided all of our series start at the same value and all the terms we're adding have the same degree. So we have our power series for e to the x and our power series for x e to the x. As a formal power series, we can just move that extra factor of x inside the summation But now our terms have different degrees. This is x to the i, and this is x to the i plus 1. And so we want to re-index using j equals i plus 1. So i equals j minus 1, and i equals 0 corresponds to j equal to 1. And so rewriting our series gives us... Now, while this is indexed in j, the name of the index variable doesn't actually matter, so we'll rename it i and get our power series for x e to the x. And so we can replace that in our expression. Similarly, e to the negative x will be, and so x e to the negative x will be, Again, re-indexing with j equal to i plus 1, and so i equals j minus 1 gives us. And renaming our index variable gives us. And replace. We also need a 1 half x squared e to the x, which will be. We'll re-index and rename at the end. One half x squared e to the negative x will be. And let's make one simplification. Negative 1 to the power j minus 2 is really the same thing as. And negative 1 squared is just 1, so this simplifies. Now we need to combine our coefficients. While every term has degree i, the first two series start at x equals 1, so we need to rewrite them to start at x equals 2. And we can do this by splitting off the first few terms. Remember, you can always start later. So the sum from 1 to infinity will split off the i equals 1 term and get the series from 2 to infinity. And we'll simplify. Likewise, for the other term, we'll split off the first term, and then we'll get the series from 2 to infinity, and simplify. So, like I said, this is kind of a long problem, but our next step, now that all of our series begin in the same place, they all have the same terms, we can add the coefficients, 
and the x plus negative x, those will cancel. And now that we have a single series, let's move that factor of 1 half into the summation. Now while this is our generating function, we need to write our coefficients in the form gi over i factorial, define gi, the number of i permutations. For that, we'll need to do a little bit more algebra. So our coefficients are these, and we need to get an i factorial in the denominator. So here, we're missing a factor of i, so we'll multiply by i over i to get. Here, we're missing another factor of i. Here, our factorial begins at i minus 2, so we need to include i and i minus 1 to get. And we'll move that 2 into the numerator. And likewise for the last term. And so we get. And let's split off that factor of 1 over i factorial to get. And we'll consolidate the factors of negative 1. So after all that work, we get our generating function. And the coefficients give us the number of n permutations. Now, since our series begins at i equals 2, that means our first two coefficients are actually 0. So the number of n permutations is 0 if n equals 0, and 0 if n equals 1. For n greater than 1, the number of n permutations will be this coefficient, which we'll express in terms of n. Now, this is a lot of work, and it would be a shame to get the wrong answer because we made an algebraic mistake. So, let's check this. Since a has to be used one or two times, there are no zero permutations. We could use 1a, but since b has to be used an odd number of times, we have to use at least 1b as well, and so there are no one permutations either. So let's pick a random number, how about 4? And so the 4 permutations, a has to be used 1 or 2 times. So if we use a one time, we get... And while we could use a two times, we would also then have to use b two times, and we are required to use b an odd number of times. So these are the only 4 permutations. So there's 4 of them. Now, if we use our formula for n equals 4, our formula gives us four permutations. And while this isn't a proof that our formula is correct, it does suggest that we haven't made any serious mistakes in the algebra.